Hello, my name is Stavros Diamantakis, and I would like to warmly invite you to a analog cinema walk. Today, it is about home. It is about the company Umig, electricity, and metal goods industry company. And today, it specifically concerns a film camera, Cologne, 1978. In the bustling city of Cologne, preparations for the world-renowned annual Photokina event are in full swing and the exhibitors are working very, very diligently on the preparations. Among the exhibitors is also the renowned Austrian company Umig. And when Umig announces its presence with highly innovative and cutting-edge new products, then indeed something is undoubtedly happening because some world novelty is being prepared once again. The announcement is that an exciting new all-weather family camera is to be presented impatiently awaiting the exhibitors and the advertising industry in general and the innovative and cutting-edge new Sportmaster, the market launch of the release of this camera was supposed to be in February 1979. But as always with the company Umig, this promise absolutely cannot be kept. And the the absolutely promising conditions for this market launch are an utterly complete and utter fiasco. The idea for the development of this film camera by Umig actually originated in the early 20th century. Born in Yverdon, Switzerland, this is where the development department of the company is located, Umig, and a highly skilled, talented, and innovative young designer, an enthusiastic and dedicated young engineer, said he would build the camera. This camera is designed to be highly durable and versatile, making it ideal for a variety of environments. It is not only waterproof and dustproof, but also perfectly suited for capturing stunning images both above and below the water surface. The camera was designed to be suitable for a diving depth of up to 40 meters. The camera presentation runs under two slogans, the all-weather camera, a true vacation camera for every occasion. And the second is the housewife's camera. Please, this housewife's camera is not a sexist term from me, but it is important to note that it should be carefully documented, that the camera is so easy to handle that any housewife can pick it up and start filming immediately. But back to the main reason why the camera was ultimately not released for sale on time, as expected. It was common at the company Umig that all parts were in fact simply made at home at the company Umig, were completed. First it becomes just clear before the exhibition and presentation that the brand name Sportmaster, which the camera is supposed to be called, is simply protected and in many countries around the world this name cannot be used. Under time pressure and Various difficulties that have arisen from this, attempts were made to find a new name. The new name was soon found. It was pleasant sounding but simple. A fiasco for this camera. Suddenly, instead of Sportmaster, it was called Nautica. This meant that with a, the camera is specifically designed and downgraded to a camera exclusively for marine or water shots and and so on and so forth, but no sign of the simplicity of this camera for a housewife. Secondly, the planned market launch, originally scheduled for February, is delayed as planned because the subcontractor who was supposed to manufacture parts of the camera was overwhelmed by this large order. Now the camera had to be built in Switzerland and the parts are prepared in Switzerland Due to a lack of staff, young herders were slightly relied upon. Those who had no work in the winter, these individuals were trained and they were supposed to produce the parts for fulfill this large order, which indeed, of course, does not allow for the training time and everything else to be maintained, could. And as a third point, it was mentioned and added that furthermore, many parts that were not manufactured by Umig were from the materials were not flawless, the screws were rusty, 
and the washers were rusty as well. Parts that were indeed executed very poorly for the sealing. This led to the delay, and instead of being ready in February, the camera was finished by the end of autumn, or during the autumn season. So it was the, the valuable time of the summer season to bring the camera to the market is over. This camera, just like, I said it's the housewife's camera, without a viewfinder. The camera is ready to go right away. You just open it up. One puts the film in, closes it. And as a housewife, you can only aim, press, and film. That's actually all. Very easy to use. If you want to film underwater, the viewfinder is attached here. The lens is currently in the park position. This lens is securely screwed on, but specifically only for underwater shots. And the only thing you have to do is switch to above water or below water. And it works up to a depth of 40 meters. The zoom lens has a focal length of 9 to 30 millimeters, and the camera is waterproof up to 40 meters. Above water, it has, the camera has 11 lenses. Underwater, there are 13 lenses. The two additional lenses can be added. Screw here. Unfortunately, the camera only takes 18 images per second. That is actually very few. For underwater shots, 24 images would be more advantageous. The power supply runs about a battery, which is that is automatically sensitive to film and was built into this camera. About 50,000 units were produced from 1979 to 1981. The camera cost 4,190 Austrian shilling at that time. Not exactly cheap for that time at all. This part here is indeed also included in the original equipment. And this part is a bag. With this bag, you can transport the camera. It is waterproof and dustproof inside and so on. But by the way, when, it, when inflated, it becomes a buoy, visible to motorboats or other vessels, and so on, if someone is in. Underwater action is. This original part, this cork, is also part of the camera. It is intended that if the camera falls, it does not immediately disappear safely and into the depths but it is a small and lightweight swimming aid and it is then securely connected to the underwater camera and the floating buoy. This is indeed truly the remarkably famous and renowned legendary Nautica camera, a truly unique and exceptional piece of equipment in the world of photography that operates seamlessly without the need for any external protective housing. And now we come to a very, very important point. Until now, it was common for a camera built into a housing, whether made of metal, plastic, or other constructions. But that is, the first time a camera was designed to go underwater immediately without a housing. And we owe this expression without a housing to Dr. Kurt Schaefer, a notable figure in the field of housing and urban development. Kurt Schaefer was a visionary who made significant contributions to our understanding of housing policies and their impact on society. Austrian inventor. Kurt Schaefer was a professional architect. He was an engineer, Dr. Techni. Underwater filmmaker, underwater photographer, underwater archaeologist. He was an offshore sailor. He was a ski instructor. He was a book illustrator. And he was also a gifted model builder of world class. And this man, I have had the luck to meet him three times. He has visited me three times. And I absolutely don't want to miss these three visits. He told me how it came to this. He was born in 1922, and during World War II, he was stationed in Tuscany, in a small and picturesque town called Grosseto. There he was indeed a radio operator. However, his great love was to build a camera 
that could be used underwater can take pictures without an additional housing, that is, without a case. And he has coined this term, recorded in a letter in 1943. He sent a letter home from the front that he wrote, well aware that these letters are subject to control, and there he has the concept without. Housing specifically designed for a camera used for underwater recordings, and this letter was specially censored and has received a continuous number from the military authorities, is archived, and so was the, the term was born, what he wanted to have. And in our meeting, he told us things. We, we laughed a lot and discussed it a lot. He talked about his first attempts in 1943 to construct a waterproof pair of glasses in the bathtub, which of course was not easy for him at the beginning. With great care, it was successful, but after several attempts it worked out. He recounted how he once, he had night duty, and his thoughts always revolved around this camera without a housing. And he has a Kodak 8mm, a completely normal cine camera disassembled, and he wanted to put it into an underwater housing install. He also talked about the disaster for him at that time that a bombing attack had caused this. The camera was almost completely destroyed and two screws were impossible to repair. He was days for months searching for two screws to get this camera up and running again and how he finally built the first housings and made test shots with the camera did not work again because during this attack the spring had been annealed and was no longer functional. The tensile strength that he would have really liked to have. He talked about the funny packages that he exactly he received from home. The parents sent him packages for Christmas, not sweets. But he wished for black earth, black sand. This is a special kind of sand, which the bell founders and metal casters use for molds and templates and other materials for an object and with this or these things he carefully and thoroughly experimented in the nights as an observer he could see where an airplane was shot down and then he was with his backpack on the way to search for metal parts so that he can cast these metal parts into bars again for his photo experiments he has also befriended Hans Haas other underwater sizes of that time and started to develop underwater cameras and to build underwater film cameras. With Hans Haas, one could say he had a love-hate relationship. He built many housings for him. Nikon, Leica, Rolleye. Everything is based on the constructions of Dr. Kurt Schaefer. Schaefer is back. Unfortunately, this has remained unknown until now. There is information that during the search for Nazi gold in various lakes of Austria, Dr. Kurt Schaefer used his equipment. He was also involved. He was a genius. He was a very special person, a friend, and an exceptionally talented filmmaker from Styria has produced a video titled The Forgotten Genius. With this video, he won the gold prize at the Austrian National Championship. This individual, who happens to be a filmmaker originating from the region of Styria, mentioned that this particular Dr. Schaefer is known for his work and contributions in the field of filmmaking. The Austrian copy of Leonardo da Vinci, and I truly believe he absolutely did not lie. Indeed. The people who knew him will remember him for a long, long time, just like me. And I forget these long conversations that we also had here in this room. Never. A valuable person who passed away in 2020, two years ago. That was the story of Umig. The story of the camera without a housing. A global idea that actually originated from Austria has come. Thank you for accompanying me. Goodbye until the next time.